All right. Well, welcome to our December 13th team call. This call is all about how to construct a really strong post on Facebook. And we're going to also talk a little bit about creating some urgency within that post. So um, I'm just going to kind of give you the three principles that I really focus on applying when I am thinking about how to create an engaging post, um, something that's really going to be relatable to other people and make them feel like I am on their level. So that's the first thing I really want to focus on. Um, I kind of just put it in this overlying area of focus on how you feel, focus on being honest and getting on their level. And I love that getting on their level um, idea because, sorry, one second, mom. We have to have, thank you. <laughs> Sync is like super loud. Okay, um, I love the idea of focusing on getting on their level because as coaches, um, a lot of us are typically already further along in our journey. And we kind of get out of the mindset of where we started because we've already been on this journey for two months, three months. And so sometimes it's hard to connect with what we felt like before we started. And that's where most people are that are joining us, you know, in that place of feeling really um, unable to achieve. So it's our job to connect with them on a level that helps them to understand we were once there too, and we found tools to move forward and pass that. So some questions that I think about when I am creating a post that is focused on how I feel and really being honest and authentic in, in my journey are, where did you start? That's a really good one to think about simply because when we think about where we started, for example, in my own situation, I was 20, 20 pounds overweight right out of school, you know, six months um, out of school and felt really, really self-conscious and had a lack of confidence going into all my auditions. I really was not about at-home workout programs. I really questioned whether I was even going to be able to, to finish my first one. There were just a lot of concerns that I had about my capabilities in having success with a program. I didn't believe in myself. Um, so I talk about that in my posts. Another question I ask is, how did you feel um, before you began? So those questions are different. Where did you start? How did you feel before you began? So where did you start? I started 20 pounds overweight when I came into this journey. How did I feel? You know, you focus on going back to that vulnerable place. It's a hard thing to do a lot of the time because we, we don't want to put our hearts out there because are we going to get judged? Are people going to, um, you know, just think that we're trying to sell a product? But there is so much power in being vulnerable and open and showing people that if we are brave, they can find hope in that too. Um, so it's really, you know, that question, answering that question is really helpful in, um, that question is really helpful in being able to relate to people, um, and the beginning of their journey. Is it a little better now, Christina? Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, all right, so another question I ask, what did you encounter as you went through your first workout? So, um, what challenges did you experience it in, during your workout? What kind of successes did you have? Those are things you want to focus on because they're the same things your niche market is going to be focusing on. You are attracting people that are like you. So the more you put your heart out there, your experiences out there, the more you're going to be attracting people who are going through what you were going through prior to starting your journey or people who are going through what you are going through right now or that want to feel what you are feeling right now. The next question I ask myself, um, how do you feel when you work out? It's such a simple question, but it's not, it's not something that people focus on. Most people focus on 
the struggle of actually just getting in and doing the 30 minute workout, which is most of the time a pain in the ass. And it's, it's that struggle of starting, you know, people don't actually want to get on board and do that. So talking about how you feel during that process and maybe how that's changed. I, I did not like working out, but seven months, eight months into consistently doing it, it's, it's 30 minutes of my day that I truly look forward to now. And I don't feel right if I haven't gotten it done in the day. Like my body is like aching for that energy release. So, you know, what a positive transformation that is in itself. You know, people out there want to be able to feel that. They just don't know how to access that. So you talk about it. Um, what did you feel when you finished your first workout program? This is a huge one because there is such accomplishment in the actual act of finishing something. And a lot of people don't get started because the length of a workout program or they just feel like just feel they're not going to be able to focus, focus on it one on day, at, one a day time. at a time. They're going to be more they're focused, focused on, it on it as a long-term long thing. Term. So we focus so one, day, focus at one day at a time. My goal today My goal is today. To 30 minutes of a workout then compound it over 21 days, you finish, and there's this triumphant feeling, and you get to look back and say, oh my gosh, okay, I did do 21 days. I can take on a 30-day program because it's only a week longer. So talking about how you felt when you finished that initial program, something so simple, but such an achievement that people tend to downplay. Um, where are you now? This is a great question because I feel like people, um, people just think we are out there trying to push products a lot of the time. And if we're not getting back to these basic, honest responses to, to these questions, then it feels phony. So where are you right now? Well, I'm in a place of genuine happiness. I feel so confident and fulfilled in who I am and I really do not care what people think about me because I feel so secure in who I am and I know that's directly correlated to coaching and helping people and doing these workouts every single day. It makes me feel good about who I am. I feel productive. Talking about those things is going to draw in the people who want to feel those same things. Um, two more questions. Where do you want to be? This is a really important one because we are constantly in flux. Sometimes we backtrack. If you're like me, you uh, struggle to get on board with your nutrition sometimes, and that's okay. We are humans. We make mistakes, and that's fine. So talking about where we want to be and publicly saying, you know, I'm struggling with this, but I'm continuing to go forward because this is where I want to be. Again, you're going to attract those people who are really focused on wanting to be in that place too. And maybe they don't know how to get started. Um, last question I like to answer when I am um, constructing a post. Why did you start? So simple. When you relate back to that feeling, and I'm not sure if it's the same for you, but when I think back to where I was when I found my first speech body program and how miserable I was in my body and how self-conscious I was, that, um, that is never a feeling I want to go back to. And it is a reason I will always continue to coach regardless of, um, oh my God, babe. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's scary. No, not at all. I can see you in the camera. Okay, bye. <laughs> um, wow. Sorry. Um, ne okay, wow. You are getting a great team call today. Um, last question. Why did you start? For me, my reason for starting is the exact reason why I will never quit coaching. Um, even if I never made a dollar... I feel fulfilled. I feel confident. I feel like I have a purpose in my life. And that to me is worth more than any dollar amount 
that could ever be paid. So talking about why you started and how that's continued to flourish and just be fulfilled and how that um, why has grown throughout your journey, super valuable. Okay, so that's my first tip is just focus on how you feel and get on their level. The second tip I have is think about the objections you've faced or the insecurities that other people have expressed and speak to those people. So you don't need to address anyone in particular. However, there is so much power in saying, you know what? I hear all the time that Shakeology is this overpriced drink that is the same as everything else on the market. But here is what I've experienced with it. And this is why I can justify spending $4 a day on my health. With me in particular, I was spending $4 a day on a cup of coffee. So if I'm going to justify a cup of coffee for $4 a day, I can no longer justify not getting my daily vitamins and nutrients in my body. So many people are still out there eating fast food. So you can speak to the, the price comparison of a healthy meal versus something that is just has no nutritional value. Um, another thing I hear a lot is that I am constantly, um, actually this is, this is more something that people I know have heard rather than me. No one has ever come at me with this. But that we're just out there pushing products. And you know what? Anyone who came out with me at me with that excuse or, you know, re rebuttal, I guess it's not a rebuttal because I didn't say anything to begin with. However, anyone that came at me with that, I, I mean, literally it would just roll off, but it's, it's something that you can publicly say I, you know, if you are someone who has thought that I have been out there just trying to push a product, you are so wrong. This product, you know, whatever it is, 21 Day Fix, allowed me to gain control of my nutrition. It got me in the habit of working out for 30 minutes every single day. It taught me the ease of increasing exercise and healthy living in my life, which I didn't think was possible six months ago. I didn't understand that I could invest time in my health in the midst of a busy schedule. So yes, I am going to talk about a product that has helped me change my life. You know, you just put it out there and it doesn't have to be combative, but you are laying your heart out there and just giving people the switch. And you know what? I don't always wait for these objections to come my way. If I'm hearing other people on my team, have these objections, sometimes I'll just put a post out there because we have to work from the assumption that people have no idea what the heck we are talking about. We need to work thinking that people have never heard the word beach body, they don't know it's an MLM, or if we are directly referencing the people who have thought that, then you know we can speak to that directly. Okay, the whole MLM thing. Well, that's not true. It's we are rated one of the highest companies in the Better Business Bureau. I am legitimately making a solid paycheck every single week. This has helped me stabilize my income. You want to think to the objections you've been getting and speak directly to those people. And on the flip side of that, you also want to think about the insecurities and struggles that you had and that other people are having and answer those objections directly as well. So for example, one that I get a lot is just fear of not being able to finish and thinking that they're not gonna be able to do it because there is no group accountability. They're not in a workout class with other people. So I talk about the challenge group and I talk about that publicly in my post. You know, a lot of the time I hear that people are afraid they're not going to have success because they don't have other people pushing them. And what I experienced, what changed my life is waking up every day, logging into my Facebook group and seeing daily motivation posted there and seeing everyone else rally and post their accountability workout pictures. It made me not want to sit on my couch and it, it held me accountable to get up and press play for 30 minutes. It helped me to stop making excuses. 
you know, you just directly address the objections you're getting and the insecurities people have and think about where it was that you started and the insecurities you might have had when you were beginning and you talk and answer those questions directly. So that's the second tip. Last one is be bold and stop worrying about what others might think. You need to speak with confidence because people want to be with a coach who they believe will help them be successful. It's the same reason you were attracted to your coach. It's the same reason I was attracted to my coach. And it is gonna be the same reason why people choose to sign with you over someone else. When they are constantly coming across bold, honest, heartfelt posts in their newsfeed, they're gonna see this isn't something that she just decided to pick up and work as a job. This is something she legitimately changed her life with. So if it can work for her, maybe it can work for me too. That's what we want. I spoke a few weeks ago in a team call about focusing in December on offering solutions to people. So we've got these 12 common New Year's resolutions and pretty much Beachbody Challenge Groups or the Coaching Opportunity answers every single one of those resolutions. So just the same way we talk about being a solution to those things, when we are posting, we want to focus on just being a solution, period. We want to be a light in the midst of a world of social media that tends to be overwhelmingly negative. We want to be that thing that offers people hope and a solution, especially going into this new year. We want to be the people who others think about when they're thinking about starting this new journey. So you have to put out there your honest experience. You need to lay it out with your heart on the table and stop worrying about how others might receive you. That's not your job. Just the same when we go into auditions, it is not our job to worry about what the other people on the other side of the table are thinking. Our job is to go in there, do our work, and do our work as best we can. And they either join us or they don't. But either way, we are still living our authentic life and sticking true to what we believe and what has helped us. We're not trying to push products on anyone. We are trying to change lives. Period. End of story. And the more people can view things that way, the more success they're going to have in this business. So those are my three tips for creating a post. And I just quickly want to touch on how to create some urgency within your posts. So let's talk about um, three quick things. First, a limited time bonus. So this is a bonus, and I'm just starting to get into how to use these. A limited time bonus is choosing a period of time, typically like 48 hours, and you come up with some kind of valuable incentive that is really worth um, purchasing during that period of time. That added incentive would be um, a really strong extra perk that, that gives them, you know, that extra desire to want to purchase. Um, but it's that 48-hour period. Then you've got a limited slots avail uh, yeah, limited spots available. Um, what do you call that? Time, time bonus? No, it's not a bonus, but urgency, urgency, limited spots available, urgency post. And that's when you say at the bottom of your posts, regardless, okay, you're still always going to allow however many people join you, join you. We're never going to turn any way, anyone away because this really is about helping people gain control of their lives. Um, but when you say, I've got three spots available or the next two people that join me, it creates that sense of urgency. Also, another tip that I loved, and I learned this a few months ago. If you say, you know, I got so much response off of my post yesterday, and that makes me really want to offer one more day of signups, whatever, you know, something like that. When you say, I got so much feedback off of my post yesterday, boom, like you've already caught them. Oh, crap, people are signing up, and I need to jump on this while I can, or there's no spots available for me. So you want to start thinking about 
how to create and verbalize that you have limited spots. You definitely want to um, create urgency with that idea. The last one is talking about a giveaway. So giveaways we do all the time. It can be something you've won as in Success Club. It can be $10 Trader Joe's gift card, whatever it is. Um, that can be maybe something that you are just pushing for at the very end of the month. But there, I want you to understand these are three different things. So something I've thought about for a limited time bonus, that 48 hour bonus, is creating something special for the people that sign up during that time. For example, maybe if, if I'm running a 21 day fix, for the most part challenge group, um, I can come up with three specific meal plans that I will provide for each week of the fix and give to those people who sign up in the 48 hour period. But the thing is, when you run these urgency posts, number one, you need to be honest and you need to stick to your guns. Don't offer that incentive that you're saying you're giving in that 48 hours to everyone else um, because this is gonna help you in future months. This is gonna really help to create that urgency. These are going to be things people want down the road if they really believe that you're not giving it to everyone. The other thing is you need to talk about the timeline in advance. So rev people up for this. You know, the week leading up to your limited time bonus, say, keep an eye out at the end of this week because I've got a really special offer coming. And then you talk about it. And when you're in that 48-hour bonus, you say, I've only got 14 hours left, whatever. You know, you continue to talk about the time because as people realize the clock is ticking down, the more anxious they get, the more they feel like they need to jump on it while it's still available. So those are my tips for creating a solid post. Um, I am going to stop the recording and I'll let you ask questions. Okay, bye.